2013 marks the 25th anniversary of the Market Star Corporation. I look at how hard it is and difficult it is for companies to survive, let alone get past the first year or a fifth year. So to have MarketStar be at its 25th year is really just a remarkable thing. I'm fortunate to have a wealth of history related to MarketStar and uh, from our humble beginnings in uh, the Hall home to, uh, to become a global provider of sales and marketing services. The origin of MarketStar uh, happened uh, when I was the president of a company called Netline and Provo and we had developed a unique technology and needed to take that product to the resellers of the world so that they could then take it into various companies. He wanted to be an entrepreneur from the beginning. So he sold bull semen, still a Guamish Yakima chief was a dairy bull. We did that, we did diamond wedding rings, um, we did diamond dental burrs with artificial diamonds for dentists, we did all sorts of fun things. And so it dawned on me, maybe what we should do is have our own group of people go out and do this service for us. We hired students at BYU who are electrical engineering students. We trained them on the product and then we sent them across the United States between the semesters. And they actually got traction with these resellers. The idea worked, but we ran out of money and the business failed. But that's the origin then of Market Star. When he decided to start, um, at that time, temp reps, it wasn't really a big surprise. Because we had these students who were temporary representatives representing some small software companies, and the, it worked so well, the company began to be viable and off we went. And he said, this is my dream, this is what I want to do, and I said, well, then we should do it. My earliest recollections of Market Star that was uh, when I was a senior in high school. Uh, I would uh, call up each of those, in this case, they would have been resellers or VARs, some retailers. Uh, I got 50 cents for every call. And uh, with that, I was able to get quite a bit of date money uh, in the early days. Those early days of the company began in 1988, when Tempreps was incorporated in Roy, Utah. Alan Hall ran the company from the basement of his home. We had about, let's say, eight or so people in the basement of our home, and they actually had to come in the front door and go downstairs. Even if they'd come in the back door, it was just on the other side of the kitchen table, so either way, the children and I would be at breakfast when they'd come in at eight in the morning, and I, I really thought I'd wear my blue bathrobe today. I still have it. Aaron, for example, had to you know, leave his bedroom and go to the to take a shower and he's walking through employees and the employees are saying, hi Aaron, how are you doing this morning? I had gotten myself out of the shower, I had a towel wrapped around me, came and walked out of the room and there was Dolores Atkinson there at her desk uh, writing the payroll for the week. There were times that some of the boys weren't up when we would come to work at nine and you'd see the door open and the door close and Alan's youngest daughter Megan would come downstairs and draw pictures of us. It was one of those kind of things where family and, and business actually combined. They were intertwined because of the very nature in our proximity. I have a fond memory of that because it was a startup time and it's a fun time because we were struggling to get the business off the ground. So we were all grateful and perhaps none more so grateful than my mother to move to a real building where we could really grow the business at that point in time. After four years of steady growth, the young company moved out of the Hall family home and into Ogden's old post office building. Two years later, Tempreps changed its name to Technology Advancement Corporation and began to land several significant clients. Well, we're in the post office today because uh, we outgrew the basement. Over time, we had about 100 employees in here and filled most of this building. And this was a time of high growth. We landed HP as our first huge customer here. At that time, 15 years ago, HP was saying, we have this new SMB market. We don't know how to tap into it. Market start, help us go into that market. And I remember having these Intel visitors come to this building and HP come to this building. And they always thought it was a magnificent, beautiful thing. But they looked at us as just this little teeny company that was doing some big things for them. And we had to grow into our shoes. We had to 
really show them that we can execute. Still a great place to bring clients, uh, and we landed a lot of them in the old post office days, and some marquee accounts. So this building represents the teenage years of our business, and this is where we were struggling, we were growing, we were trying to figure out who we were. We had lost a major retail client, and the mood in the building was quite low, very doomsday. And instead of focusing on the negative, Alan Hall brought us in there and he said, look, I built this company from the ground up and we can do it again together. And he challenged each of us that day to dig a little deeper, to be invested a little more, to be more innovative, to be more successful, and to reach our skill set to a higher level. And that was the day when the needle for Market Star started to amplify and turn the other way. All the employees got together to say, we're going to make it work and we're going to be here for the long term, so let's make sure we do this right. So we went from these small companies to these big companies that had the same need as all of these other organizations where they needed to augment and extend their sales force, where they needed to get to the consumer, where they needed to get to the business to business kinds of folks that they had. And when we saw that happen, then we really started to go after an account base, both big and small that would grow uh, Market Star into the uh, future. Rapid growth forced the company to search for a larger location, and in 1997, Market Star moved to its current headquarters on Washington Boulevard in Ogden. Here, Alan Hall and his team continued to mold and shape their winning formula for doing business. The, the culture we established early on was one where we really enjoyed coming to work and we wanted to make sure people then had, uh, were happy at, at work. I wanted to be happy and I wanted our employees to be happy. I came from Hewlett Packard and they had a really great heritage as it related to how they treat people. And I really appreciated the fact that Market Star had very similar values and that's how Alan and I got to know each other and how I became a a uh, very strong advocate for, for Market Star. And we wanted to have a premise that uh, they could have these five pillars, that they had a, a, a love of God, uh, a love of themselves, a love of family, a love of work, and a love of community. And those things were the building blocks then of uh, finding employees who saw those values and understood those, those various components of our business. Uh, frankly, at the time, I thought that no one could represent Hewlett Packard as well as Hewlett Packard badge salespeople. And so I had a channel team that I thought was quite good. But as I got to know Market Star, I realized that they had a special essence and soul to the way they operated. As Market Star grew in size and reputation, it became a more valuable entity and in 2001 was acquired by the Omnicom Agency. It's a financial holding company and fundamentally back in the uh, 80s they purchased, I should say, a, a number of advertising and branding agencies. Well those branding agencies uh, often had marketing service companies in them, but they realized as marketing services that came closer to the customer were becoming more and more relevant, they decided to create an or organization called Diversified Agency Services and frankly we've been one of the fastest growing and most important uh, parts of their portfolio. Through the Omnicom network, we're able to establish an operation in any country, right? We can lean on a local Omnicom company to do payroll for facilities, et cetera, and then we can bring our management expertise and our expertise of B2B selling, and those com that combination allows us to be successful for our clients anywhere in the world. I remember Michael Birkin, who was the CEO of Omnicom, told me that we would experience exponential growth. My mind could not comprehend what we have achieved and that he said that it uh, was possible at that time, it has come to fruition. As we look at the things that we do for our clients, whether it's going globally or uh, trying to bring diversified expertise to the table, really Omnicom is a great resource for us to, to be able to do that. In 2003, Dave Treadway succeeded Alan Hall as president and CEO of MarketStar. Soon after the change, the company had the opportunity to compete for a large portion of Cisco's direct sales support business. This opportunity was transcendent in shaping the future of MarketStar's B2B and international capabilities. They came to us in early 2005 uh, with uh, an idea that they wanted to put together a, an inside sales team. And when we went in to pitch that um, and to present to the, uh, the Cisco senior management folks, we put together this slide at like, I don't know, literally 4 a.m. And the slide showed how these two methodologies overlap and how as you develop a customer relationship to a certain point um, and you hand, that, you hand that opportunity off to a, to a reseller, 
how those two come together and how those methodologies start to click. We have now about 30 different SOWs, uh, statements of work, with Cisco. After the pitch and after we won the business, uh, Cisco made a point of saying to us, they said it was that slide that really helped us to see that you guys got what we were trying to do here. MarketStar has continued to learn and understand their clients' needs with advancements in data management and analytics. We have always really been ahead of the curve when it comes to technological solutions. It was probably in 2004 uh, when we started Homebrew, and Homebrew for us was really first generation of partner dynamics. And as we look at how Partner Dynamics has evolved to become a mission critical system of MarketStar, I think it's interesting uh, to see the evolution and to see the value we've been able to drive from a single technology platform really throughout our entire organization. One of the things that we have seen over time is the change uh, in terms of the consumers becoming much more educated. The internet allows all of us to make better uh, buying decisions. That's not only for us as individual consumers, but for businesses as well. Several years ago, we did a research report and one of our clients saw it and they actually called a meeting and said, why are you guys doing research reports? You're our staffing agency. What, what are you thinking? And they, they kind of got after us for even, even having the audacity to try and provide insights. Today, that's really a key component of pretty much every program we have. And one of the things that we've really leaned into is investments around how can we take that data and make it meaningful on behalf of our clients. That takes us from being a quote-unquote staffing agency, like that client was implying, to really a strategic partner. MarketStar's reputation and experience for generating incremental revenue for their customers has helped them double revenue growth in just five years. Today, MarketStar continues to provide people, technology, and insights that will drive their customer success and will drive their success well into the future. What I'm most excited about is that this is not a static business. You know, everything that we've done to date is actually building blocks towards our future. I believe we're going to be able to create opportunities for our employees to grow and both pro uh, professionally and personally. One of the, the greatest things about being part of MarketStar over these number of years is, of course, the evolution and the growth of the accounts. We're providing a real meaningful um, solution for that company, and we're also providing jobs. I think it's fantastic that we, every day, it seems like we're getting a new client. That's one of the most exciting things I think um, uh, we'll see happening in the next year or two, is see the MarketStar um, story and value proposition start to apply to areas like um, automotive or financial services or home and garden. Uh, there's a number of places uh, where we're going to be going uh, in the next little while. I believe that MarketStar is in the right position to be the organization that can help deliver that to all of our customers. And that's the company I want to be with, and that's the role that I want to play. You know, I've got to give just a, a tremendous amount of credit to Alan Hall for having the foresight and courageousness to actually start this business in the basement some 25 years ago. I think it's a testament to the kind of people we have, to the great vision that Alan Hall had initially, and the good work that we do for our clients. I like the fact that uh, 25 years our company is still growing and you know, we're still a valuable resource, not only in the community, but just in the business world too as well. It's remarkable to me that MarketStar still exists. I recognize its value to our customers. They're always going to need this capability that we have. I think we're just scratching the surface and the window of opportunity right now for MarketStar to accelerate our growth is just tremendous. Four, what a remarkable story that 25 years later, uh, we're still here. <laughs>